So it begins <clears throat> the first of three rounds of our mini cup taking us from Wednesday to Friday, the American tour. Which, uh, it, it kind of covers most of America. Um, well, what, West Coast, and then New York, and Florida? It's basically all there is to the United States, isn't there? Yeah, just missing Texas. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we are Under here. The Mexico sign. Mm, okay, damn so you, are you? But, um... Yeah, we are here for the first of the three races at the Blue Moon Bay Oval Circuit. No, your eyes aren't messing with you. We are using an oval again. Uh, although, we have been to this oval before. This is, like, the most, like, I guess, competent of the three. I don't know how to say it. It's the one that best fits this kind of car. But this is not the 675 category we're racing with. We're racing with the 750 class this time around. So, most of these are running with more horsepower than NASCARs would. If not all of them. I didn't exactly double check. But, a lot of horsepower to play with. and I get probably about the same amount of mechanical grip. Not much aerodynamic grip, because we are driving road-going cars. Ground effects not doing a whole lot for us. So this will be probably terrifying. We are away from Blue Moon Bay in, effectively, Seattle. I, that's where I think it is, anyway. Uh, Tyler McIntosh Ooh. is starting... To, oh boy, we're off to a great start, aren't we, Zoya? She kept it off the wall, though, so... Nothing critical happening with that AMG driver. Oh, we're already three wide. Gotta love racing here at Pocono. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh. oh! That's quite wild, sir. Uh, he was in the top five right before that, but then, uh. What the heck? Oh, he bottoms out, and up into the wall he goes. And I think it's just. Oh no, he just was out of control, bounces off of Iwasaki's skyline, down into the infield he goes, and he's able to just about keep going, but... Or not. No, he is out of the race, I think. Or he's like pulling off to the side, one or the other. Either way, he doesn't seem to be interested in continuing the event. Yeah, and I remember seeing that happening, because for this championship, I was on the spotter stand for my driver, Buckshot. And who we saw him passing right before he, uh, ate actual shit. Now, the lone Demon Swore representative, when I thought there'd honestly be more in taking part, I figured I'd see Katie and or Inferno here, but it seems they were not particularly interested. Power uh, move from McIntyre. considered, uh, Sending Inferno, but then we saw better of it with the um, sheer amount of horsepower. Yeah, that seems unsafe. This yeah. Inferno also seems unsafe, but that's neither here nor there. Another power move from McIntosh. Ooh, is... We got a crash in the back. We do? We might have multiple actually by the way things seemed. Uh, obviously, I wasn't at this race. I don't even have a car in this category. Oh, yeah, McKinley just broke loose, and Mika Harris had to fix her, basically. Crasher narrowly avoiding destruction there. Oh, camera. Ugh. Jesus. Tyler making quick progress. Not terribly surprised. Oh, Katsuragi bottoms out, but she keeps it going forwards. Maybe a little bit of a push from Chambers. Three dodges following a Honda through the final turn. And Chambers is going to stay ahead of them all. And Tyler is by no means a stranger to Oval, so I'm not surprised he's quickly found his way in the top five. Not even a quarter of the way into the race. Okay, I think Dominic just got oh. sideways. Crash oh, back. what is going on Three, back here? Oh my word, why was this not a caution? Oh. That camera didn't help us much. Uni around gets tagged by Milo, and there was more behind that that we didn't see. 
Where do you see, Mr. Ice? Trying to pass fellow Lamborghini driver. And, uh, well, he overdid it. Uni overdid it. Riel decided that she wanted to be a part of the crash, too, I guess. Aim and straight how for it. Buck avoided all that shit despite being in the middle of that shit sandwich. Well, he had a spotter. Most other drivers didn't really have that. He was getting tagged by Noir. He just came to a stop. That's what he did. <laughs> he did the relatively sensible thing of not driving straight into the spinning vehicles. <laughs> Seems oddly, oddly out of character, if I must be honest. Uh, Veronica oh. sliding into the wall again. She's just getting away with a bunch of Darlington stripes, basically. Even you are we're... not Ross Chastain. You cannot watch ride the wall. And take a look at what she didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> and Barbara is trying to make a move on DeFrisco. Down the inside goes the C7. And other side. That camera sucks. But it looks like we have a new race leader. After a, well, basically a recovery drive after starting 19th. In Autopolis just yesterday, she is now leading here from Blue Moon Bay, but Dom DePrisco is not letting that go easily. God, this paint is Oh dear God! Now just yeah. that that bump, that bump on the way into turn one, her Camaro absolutely hates. Oh, bumper to the back of the 55, I actually think. I think, I think Dom kind of got a little bit in her paint job there. Meanwhile, Tyler gets to fourth. Um, around the outside of the Viper of Hoshizora. Oh, Dominic did too much! Off the wall. Runs over the digger cam. If, or whatever our equivalent to that would be. The mole rat cam. And now it is a Chevrolet 1, 2, 3. Just about how General Motors would have drawn it up, I'm sure. Tyler tries around the outside of Nozomi, and he will get to the gas first, but that Corvette has a lot of power. Way more than a C4 Corvette should ever fucking have. I don't know what word I just said there. Um, your freebird kicking in. Oh, we're about heard for whom the bell tolls right about there. This is nearly a freaking death. That's what I mean, trying honestly maybe a bit too hard to keep Macintosh at bay. She does so for now, but I'm pretty sure that that's, uh, she's, uh, she's basically keeping second place warm for him. He's still over pushing it, and Tyler's back around the outside lane. Basically, as far as I can see on the map, the only real action anywhere on the track. Everybody else is pretty much single file, just trying to go to the end from here. Other than the Winter Cell drivers who had early mistakes, pretty much, but didn't like have anything critical. The oh. Prisco probably cooked it again. We'll see. He sees the, he's he gets the pressure from Veronica behind who's doing like 215 up his ass. And he uh does he oh. get into him? Or does she get into him, I mean? I can't talk any anymore apparently. Let's find out. I think the end of sex uh made some contact. And oh. oh yeah, he had some help alright. I and mean, he was already kind of sideways going in, but Veronica certainly didn't help matters. And now it is uh, an Urban Estate 1-2. I guess that's just how GM drew it up, I'd say. That was only is not affiliated with them, obviously. Well. Mercury, no shit, but... Um, <clears throat> be interested to see just how aggressive these two get, because these are teammates. Tyler is yeah. the sort of team co-owner, uh, along with Donnie Anderson. This team. Yeah, I know. Feelings that there's a GM invitational. Somehow, I don't know if I believe that. Is Tyler? I think is bomb drafting Barbara at the moment. 
Uh, okay then. Didn't realize thumb tracking was legal. Well, we never absolutely said you couldn't do it. You can get your bumpers Fair to line up, and well, clearly they can, in spite of the fact that they're not even the same car model. A Camaro and a Corvette bumpers line up better than the next gen cars in NASCAR do. As Iwasaki took a shot at Nozomi for third, but ultimately the Corvette again breaks later. It looks like we got a uh, secondary pack form enough for about, I think, that's six. Yeah, it's the, the continuing saga of Dom and Veronica, who both... They both really messed themselves slash each other up. And so now we're looking at a four-car pack, yeah. Milo, Noir, Dom, and Veronica. Wow, Milo! Whoa. Double overtake down the inside, which... That's the slower line from what we've seen based on what McIntosh has been doing to get up to where he's running. Veronica has decided that she will undo that, though. Get back to six, never mind. Let the bumper to the back of the 947. Goes around, comes around again. I would say Milo's not the type, but neither is Veronica, and look what she did on the last lap. Oh. No, I... no, just overcooked it under the brakes. They both kind of did, but Veronica did worse. I almost wonder if he didn't overshoot the corner to prevent her from getting ass attacked. Probably. If, if Dom were behind her, certainly, because I, I think she would probably know at this point that she might have something coming from him. Yeah, she can... Oh! Yeah, he's just going to slide into the DMs, and he's going to take 7th back. These two are... I don't really know exactly how bitter it is, but it's certainly looking like something of a rivalry here as the sun sets up Blue Moon Bay. Back down the other side goes the NSX. Can we do it cleanly this time? Oh! Absolutely fucking not! All right. So that's why security was on pit road to post three. Oh. Again, he was already breaking loose, but then Veronica didn't help matters. He again keeps it off of the walls. Now he's there with his teammate Nika. Honoka seizes the moment to put herself into ninth place. But uh, I don't know how long people will stay there. The R34 is a little iffy on power. Ooh, Veronica really gets tight on the exit of two. You can see this how much she's slowing down for these turns. That's clearly... Clearly that's set up for the straightaways, which is a valid option here. This, you know, that's Nozomi trying to get back to third on Iwasaki, and does that? Oh, well, pretty textbook. Something you're not used to seeing, given what's been happening back here. Yeah, those two need to start working together before the, the top two absolutely pull the fuck away. Right. They have already kind of done that, although we Ooh, have lap so traffic far. ahead. Oh, Mark Wilde rejoined the race, apparently. Tyler, I think, just tried to use him as a pick, but it didn't quite work out. Barbara was able to get the run off afterwards, as the, uh, the higher gears, the Corvette has better pull. Now, obviously, Nozomi and uh, Motoya are going to have to navigate the... Surely not very well set up, Mark Wild. How are things even still running? Because it will be had oh. earlier. That's the wall. That's the same thing he did earlier. He doesn't get it. Uh, don't, don't. Uh, completely. Uh, yeah. Milo gets a piece of the Viper. Horika gets a piece of the Viper. That was the rejoin I've ever seen. And there's another. You know, you know, I know Mark Wilde doesn't start the next race, and I assume that was for damage to his car. But that... Yeah, this might be dangerous driving infringements. He had a tire go down there, I think. Something had to go wrong. At which point, you should know that there's something wrong with the car, not rejoin onto the racing line and probably do a lot of damage to that Aventador that Milo was driving. Nearly Straight gets dodged. Kevin LePage. No kidding. 
barely avoided, or uh, Noir barely avoids him. Uh, Honoka does not avoid him. Nowhere to really go, I think she was still too wide with Veronica. Veronica checked up a bunch to avoid it. And she still didn't really avoid it, she got a piece, yeah. And then, we go back to Wild. Yeah, he drove straight up into him. Probably, I mean, yeah. sure, hard to see when it's this dark, but it's probably why you didn't notice, but yeah, here's what yeah. Buck sees. He's already aware of it, he sees like the yellows displayed on uh, the lights up there, but nothing can prepare him for this. Oh, yeah, no, I was expecting the idiot to stay low, not come up across the track, and in fact, uh, it's part of the reason why we had Dust.0 on the pit box as crew chief, because we knew if shit like this happened, Katie was going to want to murder someone. And we're sure that Dose didn't want to murder somebody, too? Like, I would have wanted to murder somebody if that had happened to me. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, here we are at the final corner from Blue Moon Bay. Urban Estate 1-2, does Tyler try something cheeky? I don't think he even has the momentum to. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. So, after the shift demolition derby, the essentially GM Factory team gets a 1-2. Yep, Barbara Page will be your winner from Blue Moon Bay. Tyler, Nozomi, Iwasaki, Rin complete your top five. Milo manages to hang on to sixth in spite of probably having a dumb, dumbass sized dent on the front of his Lamborghini. And yeah, um, I'm going to have to inquire with the many admins who were on the site during this race. Iwasaki and Tyler and Thrasher were in the race. race. I was not here. I was, not... I was otherwise occupied, but... <clears throat> uh, I'm beginning to believe that perhaps Mark Wilde was parked rather than destroyed, because he's obviously still running the car. I don't know how, but he's sitting here fighting oh, lapped cars at the run to the finish line. I believe... I believe he just cost Thrasher 15th against uh, Charlotte Riel as she just snuck by. That's the end of the replay loop. Whoops. Yeah, I saw that thing post race go. That thing was essentially being held together by plot convenience. I call it inconvenience. Yeah, so Riel gets ahead of Zoya normally. Thrasher applies a block. Oh my god. Zoya's god. losing control back there. And here's Mark Wilde. Getting directly in the way. There are two whole lanes up there he could be using to get out of the leader's or the other car's way. And Riel is able to pick up a free fifteenth place just off of that incompetence, so Yeah, but shit like that's why every single Demon Sport vehicle has a reinforced up front end. Yeah, no wonder Buck's car was relatively fine in spite of that. He lost the place to Chambers, but he the car wouldn't even be running if it weren't reinforced. <laughs> I'm not exactly impressed. Uh, his brother backed out of the series a few weeks ago. I don't remember why he gave a reason, but I wasn't listening. It was. It didn't seem like a very interesting like reason, or a relatively dumb one, one or the other. But uh, uh, it was a reason. Um, like many other reasons, but unlike some others. Exactly. But uh, on to under race two of the cup before I get any more irrationally angry at a race I wasn't a part of. Daytona, please go away. It's yeah, the Daytona Trioval is going to play host to our second race this in this championship, not this week, third race this week. And, oh boy, this will be interesting. We don't have restrictor plates here. Uh, yeah. From what I heard from Thrasher and Tyler in the aftermath, though, maybe we should have had them going forward. We might have we actually to... tested Inferno's car here before this championship, and she was able to do 270. And that's the main reason why we did not enter that to Bugatti. Yeah, that seems a little unsafe. Yeah, 
have. Plus, we don't have to pay a huge ass insurance fee to be able to do above 210. Mm. Funny, I don't think the other drivers have to do that, and I'm pretty sure we we're getting over 210 in the race. Oh, trust me, you have no idea how much money Inferno has. She paid for the entire thing. Oh, oh, was this? Uh, oh, this couldn't have been her idea because this was Tyler and Iwasaki's idea. Yeah. Because I'm adverse to knew. oval racing, I didn't want any part of it. I would have loved to race in round three, but we don't allow late entries, so not even for the guy who runs the series. <laughs> so there you go. And with that an interesting moment, we are green from Daytona. I almost said from the Daytona 500. That's my professional commentary kicking in. We don't have to do that here. Uh, and then, in, yeah, your guy started last here. Mark Wilde absent for obvious fucking reasons. Yeah. Helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> yeah, those point out cooked up a monster setup for the plate racing. I could see- oh, Thrasher nearly fucking turned him. Is he doing a gutter run? What the fuck? <laughs> I knew showing him initial D would work somehow. Gutter run at 232 at Daytona turn 3 and 4. That sounds like it should be illegal. It was... <laughs> just- uh, slot car Three racing, one. Glenn. Ice has to block that off. He's seen enough of that shit. Oh, oh bumper to the back of the 935. A little bit. Here he goes. Outside. Three, three wide. wide. For the race lead. Four wide. You need that barely hanging on to the car. Out of control in the back. Uh, Ooh, buck bottomed out. The wall. Yeah, at this point I was up top screaming my head off while calling every single move at the spotter. And it seems to have spread out the initial chaos a little bit here. And uh, now we're mostly single file. Buck, the only one really trying moves, so to speak. Trying to get down the inside of, well, the entire top lane, so he's gonna run out of steam even with how crazy this thing's set up to be. Plane! Lane. It's like Noir a check. 240, and I don't think Noir, I thought Noir thought she was clear. I don't know why she was even trying to pull down, but... Oh, no! Oh, big, and the big one happens behind them! Three, four, shit, they're everywhere! Uni is everywhere, pieces of the Viper are probably everywhere. Noir is in it. Noir is in it, Milo in it. And Veronica got a piece. Oh, Macintosh uh, decided he wanted to be a part of the crash, too. And they are racing back to the line. You say racing, but Buck was kind of... I don't think he was fully racing. Barbara, for some reason, was. I don't think she even noticed the caution. But uh, that is... why Buck wasn't racing back. Hmm. Yeah, but that is our uh, red flag there. Uh, because, yeah, we have to pick up pieces of Dodge Vipers scattered like Lloyd after that one. Yeah, that thing got so much air during the impact, we had a call from the FAA at the local airport. They were wondering what the fuck they picked up on radar. <laughs> oh. She just bottoms out and overcorrects back up the track. That is a 188 mile an hour impact with the outside retaining wall. Driver's side door first, mind you. Ice, I don't know how he avoids this. He gets lucky. Uh, Uni's sister, however, does not. She gets the, a big piece of her sister's car. <laughs> to see a spinning vipers and past the view. Just hooked dead right. Yeah, what the heck is Icy here doing 245 on the way to turn one? <laughs> that will traumatize a man. I've seen this before somewhere else. I can't remember where, though. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and then Milo's Aventador works like a ramp, pretty much just uppercuts the Viper. 
and somehow the Viper is still going. I don't understand. I don't think she realizes what actually is wrong with the car. She's just trying to drive away out of just pure determination. Tyler got a piece of the Viper, too. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that wasn't all of the chaos, either, because there's a reason that these two are so far back. You know, Zoya was near the back of the field. The AMG driver already had issues at Blue Moon Bay. And she did the same thing here, to lesser extent than what Uni did, but still not good. And could have potentially had race-winning pace as she and Iwasaki could have settled their differences, but instead it's a rear quarter panel out to the outside wall and a spin cycle. Not enough to destroy the Corvette, but probably enough to make, uh, make her a bit dizzy. Yeah, that is a shot, just runs over the camera just about. Yeah, here we get a full... And the full <clears throat> accompaniment. Unfortunately, I don't think we're far enough along the track to get that helicopter cam. Not exactly sure. <laughs> the view over the lake. I think that has to be uh, further ahead. Oh, we had it there for a second, but yeah, I think it has to be... <coughs> uh. Uh, maybe, although we're going to lose the camera there. I don't know if it'll stick. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't get any prettier the more times you look at it, that's for sure. Um. Yeah, that thing's got to be totaled. I'm, not, I'm still not exactly sure how it's driving forwards, but I can wholeheartedly assure you that thing did not make it to the third race. But, um, yeah, we will... I don't think there's anything left to sell. Oh, you'd be surprised what a pissed-off Demon Sport mechanic can do. I was going to ask pissed-off about what, but I don't think I want to know. I want to know. Uh, we're if, on the uh, back of that maniacal laughter. We'll just see you for the restart. And the green flag is back in the air. Four laps have been cut off the race distance, and we have lost two more competitors. <clears throat> Uni and Zoya's cars were damaged beyond repair. Surprisingly, everybody else managed to get theirs fixed. I don't exactly know how. Oh, there's a camera shot. Yeah, it triggers too far ahead to get that view of the crash, though. That's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Noir got the heaviest damage out of everybody because she was the one that took all of the force of her sister's spinning car. So now she's on a bit of a recovery drive. She has potentially the fastest car here. Now we just have to. Now she just has to prove it. Yeah, but there was so much. Everywhere, even mm. had lost a tire, so we had to change that under the uh, lengthy red flag. As there's a car going around in the back, I believe. Oh my god, that's oh, Nozomi. She didn't get lucky this time. She had a big run on Milo, but she had to slow down for it and just caught the apron oh. down there. Oh my lord, uh, uh. GT7, did we have a moment there? Did we just enter the fourth dimension for a split second? I don't know, but Nozomi definitely entered the F50 dimension. <laughs> that is not normal. Uh, this is a very well-made game. <clears throat> I wasn't even aware this crash had happened, in all reality. And here's what Thrasher sees, just sees a very potent Psy Games advertisement. Oh. As the Corvette continues spinning. I think she got high centered there for a moment as well, but... Somehow, the sheer endurance, she continues. And somehow we decided that wasn't worth another uh. caution. I don't think we really had that rule. 
It was the same thing as bump drafting. If you were stupid enough, go ahead. Well, uh, the water doesn't need to go below the line to dust the two demons. <coughs> That thing is incredibly loose. Yeah, we essentially told Bug to not push as hard because we saw what that thing was doing at 240 and the crash that happened at 240. So we just told him to hang back at like 230. No, let's not repeat that. I think Chambers kind of got the idea too. But, uh, well, Barbara doesn't hold back for nothing, and Brian has too much money to care about holding back. <clears throat> uh, or care about racing cleanly, a little bit of a door check at 230. I get it, she's Barbara, she's practically invincible, but don't press your luck, Brian. Yeah. Especially with how it seems that Buck seems to be kind of a protective of her for some random reason. <clears throat> considering, I mean, yeah, considering that, uh, actually, no, he's not a vet in mind. I misremembered events I wasn't there for. We got, like, tandem drafting going on again. This is, we got Ice and Barbara. We have the two demons. Uh, Veronica and Mika are kind of in a tandem. Milo's kind of on his own, and then Dom and Jennifer are working together. Rin's on her own. Yeah, everybody else is on their own from there. I don't know how this thing's still going after having the Corvette literally pass through it. And Tyler's car just has far too much downforce for his own good here. And in fact, we're going to be getting lap... He's going to be lap traffic soon. Lap traffic in six laps. He's doing about the speed a NASCAR would do here, ironically. Faster, honestly. <laughs> Certainly closer than everybody else. Whoa! <laughs> Did she just use a... Uh, uh, yeah, la okay. use a lap car as a pick at 245. They both moved down there. Thinking Ty was going to move up. The lapper knows his rights. He didn't move at all. And Noir was the only person that was reactive rather than... Uh preventative, and she will steal the lead with two to go here from Daytona. I, I think she got too far out ahead, though. I wonder if those two are going to be able to chase her back down. You and your quote book, yeah, they're already there. <laughs> there we go. Off turn four, coming to the line. White flag is out. One to go. Not blocked by credit one thing. A Dodge and a Chevy battling for the lead at Daytona would have made sense in like 2003, but uh, there were no Lamborghinis there. And the fact that they keep battling is not helping them, but Noir wrestling her race car is not helping her. He puts the go. block on three ice. Wide, trying to form up. Oh, we're Here three, we yep. Three wide into turn three. They are door banging. They are almost hooking each other. Here we go. Coming off the line. Well, coming to the line off turn four. Barbara's gonna sneak around the other two while Noir and Ice just get stuck together. And I think we had a, and we had a battle for a four-star brewing up too. I kind of want to I kind of want to see what happened between Ice and Noir in better detail here. He gets alongside as usual, and <clears throat> the, Noir and Barbara are initially robbing doors on the way in, and I think Noir tries to get off Barbara and comes down on Ice nearly hooking herself in the process, and Ice pushes back, turns, pushes them both back up the track. They're stuck together now, Noir's fighting to try and get off of him, and eventually does, but loses control in doing so, ending up back on the side of their Mercy Lago. Ice nearly retaliates, and Barbara basically just wins by default, by just being not, not you know, confrontational. And I nearly had a stroke calling this one from the spot. Band. Yeah, this is uh, this is what you'd usually think you'd see from Daytona. A six-car pack determining who comes home in fourth place. Uh, Buck was leading it at first, but he was, you know, the one at the front is always at the disadvantage. If they oh, no. Oh, 
three wide chambers going Four. for everything. They're holding doors. And Buck just gets absolutely shafted there. Yeah. Just is in the sixth. Obviously, he doesn't lose too much time from that. He's getting help from, uh, ironically, from an NFR car and Jennifer down there. The other one that looks like a NASCAR. <laughs> Yeah, here comes Buck, trying to create that inside line. Jennifer didn't go with him, but I don't think she needed to. Uh, three abreast. his way up to fifth. It was taken, then he took it back. Drag race up towards the line. Using the lap car as a pick, there's a door check. Buck gets fourth, courtesy of Tyler being in the way, and Mika, in her desperation, I believe... Might have tried Might have some tried desperate measures to keep that dodge away. I have never met someone with a death wish that severe before. Oh. She just straight up tried to fucking turn him. Oh. We already had Ice trying to retaliate on Noir earlier, and then his, his teammate Mika tried to wreck Buck for fourth. Yeah, and that's probably why Katie was on her leash in the pit. And Dom is the only one who didn't do anything here. He didn't do anything in either race. Other than spin out at Pocono slash Blue Moon Bay, but that was assisted most of the time by Veronica, who also minded herself here. But yeah, Pacific Spirit not making themselves out to be the good guys on the coast of the Atlantic here. And, uh, yeah. I think going forward, if we ever return to Daytona, we're gonna probably either A, want to use a slower category, or B, probably put, like, 80% restrictors on the cars. I don't know how much the restrictor plates in NASCAR restrict the horsepower as far as, like, a percentile, but... You don't want to know. <laughs> No, I'll just go with 80 as a ballpark and we'd experiment from there if and when we decide to come back to a trioval. Which I'm not really sure. We did just have somebody nearly die, and I'm sure if Uni wasn't literally a goddess, she would have. Yeah. Well, we left behind the oval racing, but we have not left behind NASCAR roots, so to speak. Uh, the, uh, final the final round of this, round of this miniature, miniature cup, cup takes us to takes us Watkins Glen. The short, the short way out way for out eight laps more of racing this, of racing week. this week. So, so the one that Logan, one that Logan allegedly Logan prefers. prefers. Yeah, the midget layout, because it's the best layout. I mean, for this kind of car, I would disagree normally, but um, considering the whole NASCAR reference stuff it just makes sense i suppose <laughs> um yeah there is a points thing going on for this championship that hasn't really been mentioned since it is only a three a three race championship and we're on the third one already and it's like someone's won the first two races yeah so it's kind of a little bit trivialized we'll say uh, Barbara uh, would have to have, like, a have total a mental total breakdown, mental to, breakdown not win it. to not win it. To be fair with Buck in a race, that is a possibility. Uh, that seems more like Buck has a mental breakdown being near Barbara to me. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of uh, actually yeah, doing the proper math, proper math. here. And, and, well, she has a well, seven-point lead. Seven point lead. So as long as, as, long as uh, unless Noir wins, no wins the race, then Barbara would then Barbara still be would fine, still as, be long fine as, as long as she got a top she seven. Got a top seven. Math. So. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is kind yeah, of a formality, kind of formality, formality more, than more than anything. And we are away from, from the Glen. The Glen. 
And fittingly, a NASCAR paint scheme, or a car themed off one, is our point of view driver with Jennifer McKinley's Camaro. Mark Wilde reinstated for this event since his one race suspension has expired. Oh, so he was officially suspended? I thought it was just crash damage. Um, I mean, I think it was probably both. I feel like if it wasn't one, it would have been the other. All right. It's definitely crash damage for Dorica Zoya and Uni, though. They are... Uh, well, yeah, the sort of sit rep is... Um, Zoya's just taking some extra time to fix the car to make sure that she fixes it properly, so she's just not participating in this final round. But Uni's Viper is just straight up toast. Yeah. Like, there's basically nothing left of that damn car. Yeah, I saw that thing at the Dodge, uh, the factory uh, support center for, just because I had to get some shit checked out. And I saw what was that car there. It's in, yes, amount of pieces. It's going to throw down the inside of your, uh, your boy Buck there. That's textbook at the Glen, especially in NASCAR racing. Yeah, well, it would be more textbook if Buck, you know, would use the actual full NASCAR line. Yeah, uh, that is, it's one of those things of, like, nobody's ever really said that we couldn't do that. Is I think Noir just blocked her teammate, Jennifer not having any of it, just decides she's going to ride the curves, which is usually a, not the best idea. Oh, ooh. Uh, oh there's the extra line there. Uh, too close, in fact, that actually didn't touch the back of the Huracan, giving it the slightest damage. I don't know, I don't know what kind of pla pla like plastic straws this thing is made out of that, that did damage to the car. Didn't even pick up smoke or dust. The Frisco's Huracan literally just flopped. Oh yeah, there's the NASCAR line. There Holy we go. shit! Yeah, Jennifer is American. She's more than familiar with NASCAR, so she she knows the tricks of the trade, and is more surprised than anything that Buck doesn't. Yeah, his um uh, crew chief at uh, Delta Point O was screaming at him at this point so much that uh, Inferno had to go over there and tell her stepdaughter to hand over the headset. She should have just ripped it off her head, that would be funny. Yeah, then she would have to deal with... Yeah, I, I will explain the entire dynamic later, but yeah, she would have to deal with uh, someone else trying to bitch slap in front of Oh, that's a little bit on the brakes. And all the way out, but keeps the car under her. This loses the, the position to Thrasher and almost to Chamber. It well, is very spread out of the, up in the sand trap. If this was about 10 years ago, that thing would be stuck. It is very spread out of the front for the most part. Pep Dog is near Charlotte Real, but not really making any uh, major threats on that position, so to speak. Jennifer now into the top six. Gotta love the bootleg overclock needle leading pack. Yeah, the. Uh, this isn't even like overclocked, this is like mutated beetle. That's why I said the bootleg overclocked beetle. Uh, that was some tired streak that I heard. I believe that was Jennifer just really just slinging it to the bus stop to get at ice. Conti continues to use all of the circuit. Hey, but we're paying to use the whole track, so we're gonna use the whole damn track. Or apparently just her. Right? The, the, truly one of the mysteries of our time, when nobody else thought to start doing it when they saw her doing it. It's almost like the rest of the pack is full of NPCs. Who knows? And wide once more. It's not even giving her huge runs off the corners. It seems to be mostly just for convenience sake, as she just... She's just making her money on the uh, start of the S's there. 
the Z01 has a lot of downforce relative to what it is, so it's able to take the S's faster than everything else. Yep, and there's a Barbara in fourth, about it, now fifth. Crossover, oh no, oh, she got off that curve. Contact! Contact! And yeah, Barbara got a lot of the curve down there, and her Corvette did a little bit of bouncing. Thanks, Felicity. But uh, I think Jennifer kind of knew that was coming, just based on the trajectory of both cars, and she was able to kind of brace herself in the car for uh, the door banging. Uh, well, it's not quite the Chevrolet 123 we had at Blue Moon Bay, but it is a Chevrolet 345 instead. Yeah, it's uh, kind of a, I would, well, wouldn't even really say unperforming event for the American cars. They're, they're doing fine, 345, 7, 9, 10, it's just a matter of that I mean, the, the, the two leaders are not American cars, and that's basically it. Jennifer, whoa! Okay, then. That was a bus stop I've ever seen. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> she backed up the entry by a mile and just embarrassed the Macintosh through the interlude. Look to the back of the Honda, trying to... Trying to make a case for the American cars, the three, the three main continents of automotive engineering represented in the top three: Europe, Asia, North America. Yeah. Barbara doing everything she has to do to just to kind of bring the title home. Noir in tenth is not really any sort of threat to that, since she one has to at least outscore Barbara by seven points. Uh, there's another one around the outside. We've seen plenty of that this week. And one more. And one more for the road. Nearly Ooh. contact. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like uh, she had a bit of a wiggle on the way into the bus stop there. But car fine. She's keeping her foot planted. While running lap time, two seconds a lap faster than the actual NASCAR Cup car. The extra downforce and with some power. extra power is probably power. helping, yeah. Helping. White flag is about to be displayed. Yep. Uh, the flagman should have the, the French flag in his hand. One to go. I don't think he's programmed for anything with the uh, checkered flag. Somebody locked up back here. I don't know. I, it might have been Veronica, but I think it may have actually just been the downshift. And I think that was squealing. Maybe just very minor. Maybe somebody just kind of had a bit of a slide on the way in and they didn't really do anything. Oh well. Give me 190. There's another gear in this car also, so... Jesus. Uh, yeah, 190 in fifth gear, and this thing, I think, uh, by Noir's estimation, tops out at about 237, I think was so Jennifer's. not the fastest top speed car in the, in the field, but definitely one of the quicker. Yeah, one of the quicker ones, but also the downforce to be able to get it done on a road course, too. And sending it off into turn seven, final time. Jennifer McKinley with a statement win, finishing off the American tour with the checkered flag. And but more importantly, Barbara is going to come home with the championship. Fifth place was more than enough. 56 points out of a maximum of 60, courtesy of winning both the ovals. So a big, a big day for... Urban Estate, Urban Estate as that's also a 4-5 four five five since Tyler got, Tyler oh, got fourth. Oh, fourth. He didn't really have, didn't it, really in have it in him for, for um, um... He didn't really have much to really offer much at Daytona, 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 but he... But he literally pushed literally Barbara pushed to the win at Bloom and Bay, Bay, and then... And then just kind of ran here and forth. Here and forth to uh, round out to Watkins, Glen. Watkins Glen. So he did about as expected for the guy who was pretty much the main person behind organizing the race. 
where did my boy finish at? I knew we were like deep in the hornet's nest, but yeah, very, yeah, very underwhelming, underwhelming performance, performance from Angelo, from Angelo all considered. All considered. Honestly, kind of expected that because it's a dodge demon that seems designed to haul ass in one direction. Corners are optional. Corners are ill-advised. Ill -advised, I would probably I say. We say. And then we had the four cars that got uh, damaged throughout the race. DeFrisco just did not enjoy himself in this championship. To say, it's safe to say. And he got just just screwed up Blue Moon Bay. Blue Moon he Bay. was mediocre pace at Daytona and literally bringing up the rear here. And all of Pacific Racing on this, or Pacific Pacific Spirit Racing. Pacific Racing is a very different very thing. Different. <laughs> Pacific Spirit Racing will probably just want to forget that they even participated in the American Tour because, well... It didn't really do much more than make antagonists out of them, especially at Daytona. Yeah, but we're just lucky that every driver came out of this championship alive, with only one car being absolutely annihilated. Annihilated. Yeah, that's a, that's a brand new word. I guess we probably need to come up with a new word to describe just how demolished that Viper was. Yeah. I don't think annihilated with an annihilated with annihilated. Yeah, and I don't think Annihilated with an A would have sufficed to describe what happened to that vehicle. There's a method to my madness. But uh, that will that will cap things off for week 128. Uh, absolute chaos this week. On and off the track. Two near-death experiences. Thankfully, they both happen to people who don't really know what death is. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, NFR's certainly got some bills to pay this week. I'll just leave it at that.